I'm pleased to have the opportunity to address you at the start of this evening's event, and I'm sorry that I could not do so in person. We know that healthy people are central to achieving all of the goals in the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. In fact, healthy people are central to achieving a prosperous and healthy planet and the future that we all want. We also know that investing in women's and children's health yields at least 10 times the amount of the investment in the return. And also the other way around, we know that progress needs to be made in all areas of the integrated 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development for health targets to be fully achieved. Over the last few years, we've learned that 50% of the gains in women's and children's health during the period of the Millennium Development Goals was attributable to factors beyond the health sector, such as education and sanitation. But universal health coverage is one of the key targets for the Sustainable Development Goals. This will only be achieved by 2030 if consistent and comprehensive efforts are made to strengthen health systems. Health systems that are strong and resilient are essential to ensuring both individual and global public health security. The United Nations Secretary General, Mr Ban Ki-moon, launched the Global Strategy for Women's, Children's and Adolescents' Health as a front-runner implementation platform for the Sustainable Development Goals. The strategy is not only about survival, it's about ensuring that all women, children and adolescents can thrive and transform both their own lives and the societies in which they live. And during May this year, member states endorsed the global strategy at the World Health Assembly. They provided a mandate for there to be regular reporting on women's, children's and adolescents' health. Specifically, the resolution passed at the World Health Assembly invites member states to strengthen systems for accountability and also to improve follow-up at all levels through monitoring national progress and increasing capacity building so that there's good quality data collection and analysis. The resolution also invites all relevant stakeholders to support the effective implementation of national plans and to contribute to the implementation of this global strategy. As they adopt this resolution, member states will be requesting the World Health Organization to work with other United Nations agencies so that technical support is provided for national planning, so that the global strategy is implemented effectively and so that progress is regularly reported so that women's, children's and adolescents' health can be properly described to the World Health Assembly each year. We've all heard the message from the Member States loud and clear. Accountability for action on the global strategy is key to its success. The first step in measuring advances in women's, children's and adolescents' health is for all of us working on the issue to ensure that we have an accurate picture of progress. The global strategy's framework of indicators for monitoring progress touches on nine sustainable development goals and 20 of the targets in the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. And the framework recommends a minimum set drawn from a longer menu of indicators that can be used to provide a snapshot that tracks progress on implementation of the global strategy. The framework also makes recommendations such as investment in civil registration and vital statistics systems and a focus on disaggregating data as part of our collective endeavour to leave no one behind. Overall, the Global Strategy's unified framework for accountability establishes a clear structure and system for strengthening multi-stakeholder accountability at the country regional and global levels, and it brings together different sectors and looks across different results 
so that resources and rights are also kept under review. One important element of the Unified Accountability Framework is the Every Woman, Every Child Independent Account Accountability Panel, also known as the IAP. This has grown out of the former Independent Expert Review Group. And the IAP will produce an annual State of the World's Women, Children and Adolescent Health report, and it'll use the best available evidence to assess progress and ad identify recommendations for accelerating the implementation of the global strategy. It'll be useful if this report is considered alongside national voluntary reviews and other sources of reporting on the Sustainable Development Goals. Please let us not forget that accountability is the responsibility of all partners. Who could be involved? Well, I'd like to suggest parliamentarians and civil society can help ensure that voices of all communities and all citizens are heard. Tracking, tracking commitments will demonstrate how all stakeholders are delivering on their promises and contributing to results. And the global strategy does recommend promoting multi-stakeholder and cross-sector collaboration for review and follow-up actions at all levels. So I do hope this evening's discussion will help inform the high-level political forum on sustainable development that's now underway. Progress towards achieving the global strategy on women's, children's and adolescents' health will contribute and be synonymous with progress towards achieving the Sustainable Development Goals. And so with these remarks, I thank you and I wish you all the best for successful discussions.